Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Curves are formed from a series of small bends that are very, very close together along a wire. To make a curve, you use the 139 bird beak pliers and you place the wire deep into the plier beaks near the larger portion of the round beak of the plier. Using your thumb, make a series of very tiny bends very close together in the wire and this forms a curve. You slide the wire along through the beaks and apply pressure. Your fingers can be a little bit away from the plier beaks for formation of a curve. You'd like the curve to be smooth and continuous. To adjust a curve to make it fit the arc that you'd like, you sometimes have to flatten out areas that are overly curved, such as this spot right here. You do that by placing the curve in the flat base portion of the pliers and squeezing it. And this will open up the curve a bit. To increase the curvature in an area that's been flattened too much, right along here, there's curvature here and curvature here, but a little flat section right through there. You place the wire back in the beaks of the plier and make two or three small bends very close together, and this will take care of those overly flat areas. There is another way to make a curve in a wire. You can do it with a whipping motion of your thumb and finger. So I'll demonstrate. You place the wire in the beaks of the plier. The plier serves as a vise to hold the wire. And using your thumb and finger, you whip the wire along your finger and smooth it like that and make a curvature. After you've done this, you can adjust the curve using the method of flattening the wire with the base portion of the plier or adding small bends as needed to adapt it to the labial surfaces of teeth or to the, the uh, pattern that you want to adapt the curve to. It's necessary to flatten out curves and wires to make sure they're in the same plane of space. Now, you do that by placing the curve on the table surface, glass slab or Formica surface, and hold down one end of the wire with your hand and observe the spot where it begins to leave the flat surface, right in here. You mark that spot with the wire marking pencil and place the wire in the beaks of the plier, in the flat base portion, and make a small downward adjustment bend. You try the wire back on the table surface again and check the flatness. Now what has happened is that adjustment has moved the spot where it leaves the table down a bit. You mark the wire again and again place the wire in the beaks of the plier and make a small downward bend to adapt the wire to the table top surface. You continue making these adjustments until the curvature is completely flat, completely adapts to the formica surface or the glass slab. 
To bend the second exercise pattern, you start by forming a smooth curve that is flat on the tabletop that's in the same plane of space. And you place the curve that you've formed over the pattern. Be sure you mark the spot where one of the loops is going to begin so that you can always return the wire to the exact same spot on the pattern when you're making adjustments. Now, I've completed most of the curve except for the last section to show you the method you use to adapt this curve. You adapt it along until it reaches a point where it begins to leave the pattern. And that's where you make a little mark on the wire. And what you'll find is that the place where you've made the mark is probably an overly flattened area. And you make a series of small bends in the wire on either side of the mark that you've made and directly over the mark. And this adapts it then to this exercise pattern outline. Now, you can do some of this adaptation with your finger too. Again, using the pliers as a vise and smoothing the wire with your thumb and finger. This takes some practice. You form the loop by marking the spot where the first 90 degree bend should be made. You place the wire in the beaks of the plier so that the flat plane of the curve that you formed is at directly 90 degrees to the plier beaks. You want this first leg of the loop to be in the same plane of space as the curvature. You bend the wire about 30 degrees. Try it on the pattern to see if you've located your bend in the right spot. And then you check the flatness of the wire. Now you know that your curvature was flat before. And it leaves the table now at the point where you place the last bend. This means that the lack of adaptation to the tabletop is due to this last bend that you've placed in. To correct this, you place the wire in the beaks of the plier and make a slight upward bend and try it again on the table surface. And sometimes more than one upward or downward bend is needed to adapt it to the table surface. But now this leg of wire is in the same plane of space as the curvature. Now we can complete the 90 degree bend to form the first half of the loop. You place the wire back in the plier beaks orient it correctly and increase the bend. You try the wire back on the pattern at this point. And if you're satisfied with the bend, you mark the wire at the point where the curve of the loop begins. You place the wire back in the pliers and begin to form the loop by placing the wire up in the larger round portion of the round beak of the plier. Start the first bend directly over the mark that you made in the wire. And with a series of small bends, form the loop. Try to keep the wire in the same plane of space as the curve. After forming a little bit of the loop, try the wire back on the pattern to see if you're headed in the right direction. This will orient you, let you know what you have to do.
by pushing that wire over that round beak, you can form that loop. Again, check the loop on the pattern. Make sure you're moving along properly. And if you're satisfied with the curvature, continue and complete the formation of that loop. Try the wire back on the pattern again. At this point, you can check the flatness of the wire to make sure that the loop and the curve are in the same plane of space. This is done by pushing down on the, on the loop that you've just formed. And you hold the loop on the table surface. And if it rocks, as this wire does, then you know that some adjustment has to be made. You pick the wire up and look at it from the side view and check the plane in space. See which section of the wire is off. In this case, the entire curvature portion has to be bent upward so that the loop will adapt to the table. You place the beaks of the plier over the entire loop and apply an upward pressure on the curvature. Now, as you view it from the side, the, uh, the curvature is flat on the table, and this loop portion is almost flat, very slight deviation from the table surface. To correct that, you want to bend the loop down towards the table. So you place the plier beaks on the curved portion. Use the flat base portion of the plier for all of this flatness adjustment. And hold the wire and push downward on that loop. The loop and the curvature now are pretty much in the same plane of space. It's possible now to mark the wire and continue the last leg of that loop and the final 90 degree bend. A little more curvature is needed in the loop here and the next 90 degree bend is going to be started right there where I'm marking the wire. We will complete the loop bending using the large round portion of the plier beak and we'll start the last 90 degree bend by placing the wire in the beaks of the plier near the small end of the beaks. You make the first preliminary 30 degree bend and try the wire back on the pattern to see if your 90 degree bend start is located in the right place. Also at this point you check the flatness again to see if the loop and the curvature are still flat in relationship to the tabletop and if your latest bend is causing the, the flatness to deviate. We need a little adjustment of this wire downward towards the table surface to bring it into the same plane of space as the loop and the curve. Now, you complete the formation of the 90 degree bend and try it back on the pattern. A little more bend is needed.
and the first half of this curvature exercise has been formed. The wire should lie directly over the lines on the pattern and should be flat on the table surface and the wire should be free of nicks, scratches, surface defects. The second loop is constructed in exactly the same manner. You start with a mark on the main wire where the first half of the loop is to begin. The completed wire fits exactly over the lines of the pattern and it is free of nicks and surface defects and it should be flat on a flat table surface or glass slab. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.